let me welcome you to our service of worship. And uh, that's a little bit loud, isn't it? I'll speak more softly. Welcome, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our service of worship. I'm Rob Benson. I'm the pastor at Bar Harbor Congregational Church. I'm privileged to be here. Kaya Baxter is our minister of faith formation. Do you want to tell everybody your exciting news? I was just, we, I have moved into the parsonage, so I am finally getting settled and I will officially be finished moving, finished in the fact that all my stuff is here. I'm not sure when I'll be finished in terms of unpacking. It might take years. Uh, uh, on the 15th of July. So we're moving in process and it's really exciting to be in the parsonage. It's beautiful and I'm really grateful to be here and settled and all of those things. I'd invite those who are here, if you've got something to celebrate, you can stew on that for a minute or two because I have a couple of celebrations to share with you. Folks on Zoom, you can share your celebrations, anniversaries, birthdays, and we can um, lift those up in a second. You might notice some flower remnants around. That's because there was a wedding yesterday and Stephen Manning and Morgan Malley were married. Stephen Manning and Morgan Malley were married here. And so we wish them well and we send them our blessings and our prayers. Congratulations to them. Also, I meant to share with this with you uh, last week, um, but Adelaide Marnick was born to Isaac and Elizabeth Marnick just about 10 days ago, two weeks ago. Elizabeth Marnick um, has been uh, a part of our congregation, but also a real great resource in the, the community, the region, even beyond um, during the whole COVID thing. She's um, got a PhD in science education and shares her information in ways that people can easily understand. So she goes by the, I don't know if it's Instagram or Twitter or something, but Science Wiz Liz. And so she just had her second baby, Adelaide. So congratulations to Isaac and Liz. Are there other things we might celebrate this morning? Anybody just don't be shy. All righty. A couple birthdays. Dean Doherty and Tim Rand have birthdays today. Brent Walls has a birthday tomorrow. Uh, Rodney Eason has a birthday on the 6th and John Kelly on the 9th. So happy birthday to all of them. A couple things I need to let you know about. We've got two hymnals. One is a red pilgrim hymnal. You might, if it's, you're sitting in the pew, you might see it right in front of you. It has a little uh, embossed gold cross on it. Oh, Lexi, you got it. Awesome. Thank you. And we've also got another hymnal. It's called the Strength and Song Hymnal. So if it says red in your order of service, pick up the red one. And if it says blue, you know what to do. A couple of, it is a communion Sunday. So hopefully you may have picked up some oyster crackers on the way in. We'll also have small glass cups that we'll bring around to you. Um, just as you open the oyster crackers, open gently, not enthusiastically. And then we've also, oh, you may have picked up the all-in-one. Same thing here. Don't just, I mean, I know you're excited to share the gift and grace of communion, but do it reverently. How's that? And just, there's two layers, a very thin one, peel that carefully. And then there's one that's more like a pull tab from a, 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 a little pill or something like that, a piece of medicine. Pull that gently as well. Great. Um, Jan, Jan, you had a, an exciting announcement. It's real close. Can you hear me? Um, during COVID, we had no mechanism for having coffee hour, and we'd like to get it reinstated by having it outdoors during the, next, during the summer season. If it's raining, it's canceled, okay? But otherwise, we'll try to have something outdoors like we did last week, very simple, like we had coffee and lemonade and just some cookies and fruit. That's it. Make it very simple. So what I did is prepared, uh, on behalf of the Welcome and Care team, a calendar of the Sundays remaining in the summer that we can pretty well be assured it'll be warm enough to be outside. If you could sign up on one of these dates to, to help serve coffee or something, 
after church, that would be great. I'm going to start this clipboard around on that side of the church and it can come back up this way to me. Any questions? Okay, thanks. The last thing is, I know it's a season where we might have folks visiting from, from other places. Is there anybody here visiting from further away than Ellsworth? Probably. Oh, great. We'll just, where, where are you all? I know where you're from, but if you could tell everybody and I'll repeat it. From Lewiston. That's, that's the winner so far. Good. How about you guys? Frederick, Maryland. Yes. Columbia, Maryland. Let's hold on one second. We'll let them go by. From Columbia, Maryland. Oh, fantastic. Other folks further away from, oh yeah, from Michigan. There was one year, there was one week, a couple years, a few years ago, where we had a contingent from Ohio and a contingent from Pennsylvania. And I think it happened to be the week of the Ohio State Penn State football game, but everyone got along. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Steve. Well, good morning, and I'd also like to welcome you all to Bar Harbor Congregational Church and those out on Zoom as well. Uh, it's almost like a hockey game. The siren goes off to celebrate our visitors instead of after a goal. So uh, welcome to visitors and welcome to our locals as well. Uh, there are a few announcements in the bulletin that I'll just summarize uh, for those that don't have bulletins right now. Uh, on Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m., there's morning prayer in person here or on Facebook. Uh, on Thursdays at 10, there's a saunter, which is, uh, which is a walk around town. It's easier to walk around town than drive around town. Um, and that meets at 10, and they just kind of decide what their destination is. Sometimes it involves chocolate, but not always. On Thursdays at 7, there's evening prayer. That's also either here in, or, or on Facebook, 7 p.m. And there's a Bible study that meets Friday at 11 a.m. And that's here in person or on Zoom. If you want to plug into any of those opportunities, see uh, any of the people that are up here or, or uh, out at the table. And uh, does anyone else have any other announcements before we begin with worship? Okay, I'll light the candles and we'll, we'll begin. Our first, uh, our introit will be Seek Ye First. Uh, the words will be up here, or you can look in the blue hymnal, one, page 156, first verse. Shout joyfully to the Lord our God. Glorify God with praise. Everything on earth will worship you, O God. All will sing your praises, shouting your name in joyful songs. Come and see what God has done. Let the whole world bless our God and sing God's praise. For our lives are in God's hands, who keeps our feet from stumbling. Our first hymn is For the Healing of the Nations. The words are on page 51 of Strength and Song or up here on the screen. The tune is not the same one though that you'll see on page 51, but it should be familiar.
beginnings, you make all things new. Victim of Christ, make us agents of your transforming power and heralds of your reign of justice and peace that all may share in the healing Christ brings. Amen. who are young at heart want to come forward and chat with me for a couple minutes? Hello. I see movement happening. Hello. How are you doing this morning? Are we good? Thumbs up. So this morning, um, in church, we're going to be talking about a Bible passage that talks about disciples. Do any of you know what a disciple is? You know what a disciple is? Thank you for sharing, Lexi. So disciples are followers of Jesus. What do we think it means to follow Jesus? Have you ever played follow the leader? Yeah. Yeah? What do you do when you play follow the leader? Do you follow each other? Yeah. Yeah? You do you see if we're playing follow the leader right now, if I'm the leader, what would you do? You would if I did this, what would you do? Or you would right, you watch what they're doing. You would if I did this, you would put your hands out, right? Shake our hands, move my feet. Now Jesus taught a lot more than just how to move your hands and feet, right? Jesus taught us about a way to be. So if you were a follower of Jesus, you would want to do the things that Jesus was teaching, right? What are things that Jesus teaches us to do? Do we know? What do we think Jesus teaches us to do? Yeah. Be the same as Jesus, yeah. Same as Jesus? Yeah. Yes. Do we have any other ideas? What would we? What do we think? What do you think Jesus teaches us to be? Do you have any guesses? Jasper, do you have any guesses? No. Do we think that Jesus teaches us to be kind to each other? What are ways that we're kind to our people? What? If somebody falls, we can help them up. That's a great suggestion. What else can we do to be kind to someone? Yeah. Listening to other words, that's a great example. Other ideas, what we might be able to do to be kind or to be generous or to help people, right? Do we have other thoughts on what we might do to be like Jesus? No, we have a lot of really good suggestions right here. Yeah, Lexi? Yeah. 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 A bird? Okay. Thank you for sharing. Right. Yeah, we wanted to be the same as Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, one of the things that we do as disciples is we share God's love through practicing being like Jesus. Right? Yeah. yeah it's God's love. Yeah. God's love. Okay. Will you all pray with me? Yeah. yeah, pray. So you're going to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God help, us be your disciples, help us be your disciples, sharing the message of your love to everyone we meet, everyone we meet. 
Amen. So now we are going to go out that way and we're going to hang out with Sarah and Livia and Amber today. And they are super ready and ready to have fun with you. And now we will all continue in the spirit of prayer um, as we join our hearts and minds in prayer. We will have time in a few minutes to share uh, joys and concerns, either by way of Zoom chat or through the prayer card, prayer request cards that are on your um, in your pews or that you took from the table out there. So if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and jot them down um, now, um, and I will collect them in just a couple of minutes. Please join your hearts of mind in the spirit of prayer. Holy, loving, protecting God, we come to you on this day with full hearts and minds, and we bring to you the prayers of this community, prayers for healing, for hope, for comfort. And we lift to you the names of our community now. We pray for Carl, Darlene, Gertrude, Levi, Ginny, Jen, Chris, Bryn, Todd, Rich and Sue, Kathy, Kelly, Christina, Hannah, Misty, Wanda, Joshua and Aiden. We pray for Helen and Joe. God, we pray for the Friends and Community Life Center of Haiti, and we seek your consoling spirit for all who have suffered losses recently. For the families and community of Ann Penfield, Sandy Heigett, Hannah Wilkinson, Cheryl Bittner, Helen Berry, Paul Hartel, Nicole Monkney, Sean Pe Persons, Aiden Butler, Julie Sukip, uh, and Kathy Johnson. Holy God, you are one of mystery and majesty. We wonder at your amazing creation from the peaks of Cadillac Mountain to the depths of the ocean. We seek you on the pathways and bridges, in the short shops and restaurants, in our daily lives through community and compassion. In daily interactions, may we embody your love through our actions, practicing a peace like only you can inspire. We praise you, O oh God, for your love and compassion. When our days feel long and our patient falls short, your grace fills in the gaps, weaving in and out like a gentle summer breeze. May seeds of compassion grow in our hearts as we tend to your call. You are the balm for our really souls, O oh God. As the weight of the world can feel like too much, your love holds it all. We live in a world where we cannot find common ground. Instead of finding unity in the shared experiences of humanity, we are divided by our differences. People turn to violence, seeking power in situations where they feel powerless. We, pay, we pray for the people of Ukraine, Syria, Sri Lanka, and nations across the globe experiencing turmoil, political rest, unrest, and violence. We pray for all those whose homes are not safe places to live. May, we seek, may all who seek housing find a home. All who need shelter find sanctuary. We know that you call Earth your home. You seek shelter along with us. We are hungry and thirsty, O oh God. We hunger for the tangible signs of your grace, your holiness in our daily lives. Many of us also hunger for the most basic of needs, wondering where our next meal might come or how we might feel their loved ones. Where there is hunger, may there be abundance. Where there is thirst, may all our needs be satisfied. May we find common ground in unity in seeking justice and loving kindness, drawn together in unity, seeking your kingdom, O oh God, for all people. 
that we might live out your gospel each and every day. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love. And community is transformed by justice and compassion and making whole all that is torn asunder. We will rest in your embrace, offering the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud, or by way of chat or through the prayer request cards, which I will collect now. We pray for Marty's sister who is recovering from a fractured hip and has COVID. To your love, O oh God, we entrust all for whom we pray and all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our response. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11 and 16, and it's on page 948 of your Bibles there. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20, and that may be found on page 844. <clears throat> After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him <clears throat> in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, 
The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from the heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That ends this morning's readings. I want to take a moment, Steve, while I see you up there. I need to let you all know that Steve is not only the chair of our church council, which is big enough, but Steve often is not right here in the sanctuary, except when he pops in to sing during choir, but is most often running the PowerPoint during our worship right through the hallway. So Steve, it is great to have you here. And I really want to also thank you for all the tremendous work that you do. Let us pray. Loving grace, we ask your presence within and among us all this morning that your word would take root in our lives, lifting our faces to your glory and our actions to your will. Amen. Thursday marks the 38th anniversary of the death of Charlie Howard, a young man walking with his boyfriend along State Street in Bangor, who was thrown off a bridge by three teasing teenage boys, even after he told them he couldn't swim. As many are eager to post publicly, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. In one of our nation's founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, we hear these words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Ever since, we have been far too eager to create exceptions, exceptions of circumstance, prejudice, or privilege that permit us to limit life, constrain liberty, diminish happiness, and indeed even kill. Paul, writing to the Galatians, cautions, do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Deep inside, we know this. We know our complicity in rationalizing others' suffering. We know that none are free until all are free. We know our indelible God-ordained interconnectedness. And so we know that anyone's death diminishes me because I am involved in humankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls 
for thee. Finally, at our core, we recognize the truth in Martin Luther's catechism, which analyzes the commandment that shalt not kill, not only as a negative, do not, but also as a positive, do this. He writes, we should love God that we may not hurt nor harm our neighbor, but help and befriend them in every need. He explicates further as Martin Luther is wont to do. First, we would harm no one with our hand or by deed. Then that we do not employ our tongue to instigate or counsel thereto. Further, that we neither use nor assent to any kind of means whereby anyone may be injured. And finally, that the heart be not ill disposed toward anyone, nor from anger and hatred wish them ill, especially those who wish you evil or inflict such upon you. And secondly, under this commandment, not only one is guilty who does evil to their neighbor, but also one who would, could do them good, prevent, resist evil, defend, and save them, so that no bodily harm would happen to them, and yet does not do it. Therefore, he writes, it is God's ultimate purpose that we suffer harm to befall no one, but show them good and love, and especially those who are our enemies. Deep inside, we know this. But alongside with the Apostle Paul, we admit, I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do is what I do. Today, I'd like to first invite our deeper reflection on all of this, and then notice how Jesus responded to the seductive and voracious powers of his time by sending out a cadre of notably underqualified people to build the kingdom of God, to extend and receive peace, to cure the sick, and to cast away the demons of exclusion, violence, and hate, which is just what they did. First, for our reflection, perhaps you've encountered this searching tongue-in-cheek piece from contemporary poet theologian Wendell Berry, a sort of modest proposal that prods us to take a closer look at what sacrifices of integrity we accept in the living of our everyday lives. It's in the form of a questionnaire, a fill in the blank, and I'll share just a few stanzas. One, how much poison are you willing to eat for the success of the free market and global trade? Please name your preferred poisons. Two, for the sake of goodness, how much evil are you willing to do? Fill in the following blanks with the names of your favorite evil and acts of hatred. Three, in the name of patriotism and the flag, how much of our beloved land are you willing to desecrate? List in the following spaces the mountains, rivers, towns, farms you could most readily do without. His point, of course, is that we already make these trade-offs, just not explicitly. That we all live upstream from people and places facing devastating drought. He brings us face to face with the fruits of our choices that we might consider another path. Likewise, Jesus saw and chafed at the tremendous evil afoot in the world in his time. Things like patterns and systems of oppression and exploitation, and the violence that supports them. Things like religion that's too comfortable with social hierarchies and too cozy with empire to build the kingdom of God. Jesus' response to this reality, send in the lambs. Today's reading from Luke's Gospel recounts Jesus' deployment of a group of 70, sending them on ahead as an advance team to the towns where Jesus was going. There they tilled the soil, so to speak, bringing peace, sharing hospitality and table fellowship, and sometimes also enduring rejection. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves, he said, noting that they would be utterly dependent on God and on the hospitality and mercy of their would-be hosts. 
off they went. Often they found that deep would call to deep. The people's deep yearning for liberation and redemption would open ears and hearts and forge pathways of grace and community in a wilderness of insecurity, anxiety, alienation, and fear. And the 70 returned with joy, singing praises, amazed at the power of God. Susanna Guthrie writes, I suspect that most of these 70 people that Jesus sent out didn't see themselves as anything special. Most, if not all of them, needed to be ministered to themselves. They lived in a terrible time, under the brutal oppression of a foreign power, systemic local government corruption, food insecurity, fragility of life, and capacious fortunes. Why send me, they probably thought. Jesus warned them that it wouldn't be easy. They might face rejection, thirst, hunger, forces of evil. Behold, I send you out like lambs among wolves. But they came back amazed, saying, look what God could do. As followers of Jesus, we too are both conscripted and deployed to proclaim the good news of God's extravagant love. In the midst of the snapping jaws of whatever threatens us, not only each of us, but all of us. Mother Teresa wrote, the biggest disease today is not leprosy or tuberculosis, but rather the feeling of being unwanted, uncared for, and deserted by everybody. The greatest evil is the lack of love and charity, the terrible indifference toward one neighbor who lives at the roadside assaulted by exploitation, corruption, poverty, and disease. Therefore, let us become co-workers of Christ. Let Christ live and radiate his life in us. Let the poor be drawn to Christ through us and invite him to enter their lives and their homes. Let the sick and the suffering find a real angel of comfort and consolation in us. Let the little ones of the streets cling to us because we remind them of Christ friend of the little ones. Behind Christ's deployment lies a quiet and sobering reality. We have two choices, despair or action. The enormity of the challenges are close to overwhelming, but with God's power and inspiration and the blessings of good company, we go out to share the good news of the kingdom of God and set about building it together. Paul writes, let us not grow weary of doing what's right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. Bible study this week, we loved this disarmingly personal comment from Paul about writing in large letters, the ancient equivalent of writing in all caps. Apparently, he's super serious about this. Let's work for the good of all. Let us not let convenience, prejudice, or privilege blind us to the consequences our choices inflict upon others. Let us instead follow Luther and love God that we may not hurt nor harm our neighbor, but help and befriend them in every need. Let us travel light, depend on God, extend peace, cure the sick, and cast away the demons of exclusion, violence, and hate. Set before us on tables of welcome and sustenance, are provisions of bread and cup, the bread of companionship, the cup of blessing, which today we share once again as siblings in grace, called up and sent out to bear light and build hope for God's yearning people. And as Jesus said to them, whosoever receives us, receives the ones who sent us.
We have two choices, despair or action. May these gifts shared freely and tinged with hope and the gift of our lives represent our intention to follow Christ. Let us stand and sing our praise to God. hope-filled generosity and the offering of our gifts and the living of our days. May we not grow weary of doing what is right, but commit to speaking up for the voiceless, healing the broken, feeding the hungry, and sharing all those mercies which are such a part of your heart and hopes for all your beloved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May be Love calls and compels, and yet often we are too busy or too burdened to respond. Let us acknowledge our needs and our desires to live and to love as God intends. O oh God, Jesus sent out his disciples without purse, luggage, or sandals, but often we find ourselves clinging to the possessions we don't need, looking for safety by avoiding risk and bearing heavy burdens that slow us down. Forgive us for our reluctancy to travel lightly and heal us for the, our pain and guilt. Forgive us and heal us, O oh God. Holy One, the Apostle Paul encouraged the Galatians not to grow weary, but to use every opportunity to work for the good of all. And yet hectic schedules, compelling demands, cynicism, and doubt erode our commitment and leave us feeling burnt out. Forgive us for our hollow excuses and heal us of our exhaustion. Forgive us and heal us, O oh God. O oh God, we confess that sometimes we expect to perform great complicated acts in flashy dramatic ways. So we fail to see how you are at work in the simple tasks and ordinary experiences of everyday life. Forgive us for our misunderstandings and heal us for our slightedness. Forgive us and heal us, O oh God. There is no pain that God cannot heal, no wrong that God cannot forgive, no blindness God cannot restore. Come, let us bask in the healing waters of God's forgiveness. Let us receive God's restora restoration, for God has made us whole. We share a sign of God's peace and grace with all those around us now. Peace. Mm. Peace, Jan. Hello. How you doing? Nice to meet you. My microphone's still on. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give God thanks and praise. Ooh, let us give God thanks. And pray to give God thanks and praise. <clears throat> On the night that Jesus was betrayed, well, this actually usually happens up there. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus sat at the table with his friends and he took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it, 
and gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. After supper, he took the cup and when he had blessed it, he gave, them, gave it to them saying, this is my body, my blood, the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you do this, remember me. Let us pray. God of new life, send your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup that they may become for us heaven's food and drink, healing, forgiving, making us whole, and that we may become your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome to this feast of grace. I invite you to take whatever form of bread you have access to, and as you open it, hold it for a second, and we'll share it together. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the cup of Christ for our reconciliation. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table with the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. It's found in the Blue Strength and Song Hymnal on page 116. And I invite you to stand.
in the assurance that the Comforter remains with us always. We go to give comfort and grace to others. May divine wisdom guide us as we travel along her paths of peace. May we find joy in sharing these blessings with others. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is pouring rain here in Montana. What's the weather where you are? That's the rain is bright and sunny. Pretty nice. <laughs> and what are things doing in Ellsworth? Oh, and Go ahead. Hey, hey, we got competition here in Ellsworth. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? <laughs> it's nice to see you on Sundays. <laughs> Go ahead. I guess you're happy for the rain. Yes. We've actually had a moderate amount of rain the past two weeks, so it's it's good. 
the, a little bit consistently really helps the fly, wildfire problem. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've had some really interesting storms though that, I mean, we can, we can see 180 degrees. We've had these thunderstorms that just come through and roll through again and again and again. And we've had so many rainbows, I've lost count. <laughs> it was funny to see Jan stand up in church. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice that they're getting coffee fellowship going again. Yeah. So foxes and, and Sarah, do you think you'll be going back to the sanctuary anytime soon? Or are you feeling pretty good about just staying on Zoom? I may I may try it. Um, I have been to the church, you know, earlier. I don't know if it was earlier in the spring. Um, the cost of gas and all is, and, and I think about just using the gas, you know, it doesn't do <laughs> the world any good. So right. I'm, I'm kind of sticking with Zoom, but uh, I'm also considering perhaps going down on the Island Explorer bus oh, yeah. out of the, um, the center. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of the center. Yep. And um, coming to church that way occasionally. So, That's a good idea. I, I'll still wear a mask, definitely, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting that I've thought about, Cindy and I have both thought about coming back. And I mean, right now, it's required that you wear a mask. And there is an uptick in the situation of uh, COVID. Yeah. Uh, I thought of something very interesting, maybe you haven't even thought about this, that uh, Cindy and I came from a church that had three services. Uh, and there were people who were in one service that became meaningful. And people in another service in their collection body became meaningful. I have found this collection of folks that are on right now a blessing, tell you the truth. It's like a church service. <laughs> and when we do go back, I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no plan to discontinue Zoom anytime soon. That is for sure. And uh, I know our, our numbers are on the uptick here. In fact, um, one day this week, uh, 15 people were admitted to the local hospital with COVID. So um, it, it's definitely on the uptick. And, um, you know, it, we've, we think we've got things pretty well covered for Rob's sabbatical, um, but he's definitely the troubleshooter on Sunday mornings if there's an issue. So we're trying to, uh, you know, make sure that Chloe has everything she needs and um, Paul's going to start helping with the... Um, slide production which i've been doing for two plus years three yeah, years two over two years now um so we'll you know there's times this summer we have a spreadsheet with with the whole tech crews attendance and there's a couple of sundays where um i i think we've covered it all but there's a couple of sundays where you know al and i are gone or um Steve's gone and we think Chloe's there every Sunday. So that's good. But, um, you know, we're doing the best we can to plan for the sabbatical. So. We appreciate all that you do. And we've heard Chloe's name so often and she, you know, appreciate her involvement. But can you tell us a little bit about her? Is she a college student, high school student? I mean... She she just graduated from MDI High School, and um, I believe she's her plan. Last she told me is that she's staying on the island and she's working this next year um, to save up. So whether she goes on to college after that, I'm not sure. But she has a, a another day job, um, you know, through the week 
and has able has been able to continue helping on Sundays, which is great. So um, it's great to have yeah. a young person, you know, commit and, and donate that time with their expertise. So I was yeah. just curious about her background. Yeah, I'm sure she is paid. Yeah, um, good. And you know, sometimes people take it a little more seriously. <laughs> not that, right. not that we're not, because we are volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> we are taking it seriously. Yeah, we're taking it very seriously. We would never accuse you of not taking something seriously. <laughs> <laughs> with our daughter, with our daughter volunteering us all the time, sometimes I felt like a professional volunteer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. On the uh, on the rescue team, when when I was still out there, um, the entire rescue team is volunteer, but. It was built into us in terms of performance. We are not volunteers, we are unpaid professionals. <laughs> sometimes when you're seriously into something but not getting paid for it, it's more that aspect than, yeah. than the and other. We've, we've commented to folks when they say, oh, I'm just a volunteer. So you know, you're not just That's a volunteer. volunteer. If it weren't for you, this wouldn't be happening. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I, noticed no, I, Pat, I noticed that Pat was on Zoom before. Uh, she Last week, she said she had COVID. Does anybody know? Pat Dezazo? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Last week she mentioned that her. I think oh, we weren't her, here. Her, we weren't here. We didn't right. know that. We weren't here. I didn't know that. She yeah. was at Bible study on Zoom on Friday. Oh, okay. And she must not have had a very bad case. So no, I don't think she huh. did. But, yeah. oh, okay. They're moving. You. They're moving to Bar Harbor. Mm -hmm. Isn't that well, great? Last week, yeah. Last week she, I think she shared that she sold their place in. Florida. Okay. Uh, There's uh, building a place in, in Bar Harbor and they will be selling apparently their RV or whatever it is they use now. Mm -hmm. Wow, they're building in right in Bar Harbor? Yes, yes. Yeah, I haven't talked to her to get the, yeah, the details. Hall's Cove, I think. Hall's Cove. Nice. Yeah. Oh, we're glad we can tell you something that you missed. I didn't. I thought you knew everything. Oh, stop! <laughs> uh, well, we've been doing some uh, some traveling within the state. Um, you you may or may not know that we're both amateur amateur radio operators, and um, so there's a a really cool part of the hobby of amateur radio called Parks on the Air. And the goal is to make as many contacts as you can from uh, a national park, a state park, a national trail, a national wildlife refuge, you know, any of a number of, of places. You can be what's called an activator when you go to that site and you set up all your equipment and try to make as many contacts as you can. And the people that contact you that answer are called hunters. And so um, we just started this a few weeks ago and um, it's especially exciting when you get what's called a huge pile up and you, you know, you let people know that you're there and you get, you know, six people answering you all at the same time. And so you get contact, you make contacts very, very quickly. And this past week we drove uh, like 470 miles round trip to um, a national wildlife refuge that had never been activated before. And um, so I made, I don't know, 50, con something over 50 contacts in like 45 minutes. It was a blast. and. Um, so we're we're actually next week, right after church, we'll be heading up to Glacier National Park. Oh wow! For a week. Okay. We've never been in the park, so this year we will be. Um, and uh, and then there will be a, a ham radio um, festival up there. So um, so we're kind of combine that all and do a few uh, activations from up there. But it's great to find a new part of a hobby that you really like and do something new with it. So uh, we're having fun. Cindy and I visited the uh, Glacier National Park with our kids. Oh, did you? 
we went there uh, about this time of year, and or maybe it was shortly before this, and the Rising Sun Road, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful rides in the country, that they were talking about still pushing snow yep. toward the roads. And there were hiking trails that you just couldn't go in, except you could see where the grizzlies grabbed and took uh, food out, you know, of, uh, yep. that was in the ground. So it's, a, it's a beautiful park, beautiful park. It's a beautiful park. It's a very, um, there's a huge grizzly population and um, they have not yet opened the road to the sun. It's, they're hoping the 13th, which is, you know, during our stay there. But um, if we go on that road, we're going to go on one of their shuttles. I'm <laughs> going to take our truck. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when, we, when we did hiking uh, in the park, which our son and I, my, my son and I, did and stayed overnight we wore what they call bear bells, bear bells. Mm -hmm. you attach them to your hiking boots <laughs> or your backpack and as you walk it rang a bell and they didn't want to see us any more than we want to see them you know yeah, yeah. it's interesting they actually met a grizzly oh, yeah, on the trail we did so they, the bells worked yeah oh yes well they always say you don't want to find bear poop with bells in it <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Oh, <laughs> you wanted to. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have to share a, a little joke with you because it came to my mind. There were two hikers hiking in bear territory, and they were not wearing bear bells. And uh, they knew they were being followed by grizzly. So the one guy bent down, took off his hiking shoes, put on his running shoes. And the other guy looked at him, he said, well, you're crazy. He said, you can't outrun a bear. And he said, I only have to outrun you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Glacier is magnificent. And uh, one of the buses, the iconic buses, is the way to go. Really. Where will you be staying there, may I ask? We're taking our camper, our fifth wheel, um, which we haven't taken out in a long time because it's $6 a gallon for diesel. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Um, but we're staying at Glacier Meadow uh, RV Park. Yeah. Yeah, we were at uh, a KOA there. Mm -hmm. I believe it was St. Mary's, Mary's KOA. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's very nice. Yeah, we we can see the park from the campground, so it's that it's just due south on Route Two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're we're really looking forward to it. We were up in the campground last year at this ham radio gathering, uh, but didn't leave ourselves enough time to get into the park. So this year we're going up extra early um, to to have several days available to us. And we had to get a reservation to be able to you know drive on the road or even I if, guess if they open it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Well, enjoy, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And then we're back for, for just four or five days and heading up to our daughters in uh, Balfour, British Columbia for uh, a week. Yeah, 10 days or so. So that'll be good. They don't have grizzlies there. Well, at least <laughs> not in their yard. <laughs> just grandchildren. Yes. Yes. So that'll be great. Anybody else have summer travel plans? Just locally, we have a number of some state parks that we want to visit. We got it. We just had tires put on our, our small motor home. So I told her, I said, I'm not going anywhere until we have new tires. So okay. um, last week we had that done. So now we're just pursuing where we want to go. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you don't pull with a, a diesel vehicle, right? No, no, it's just a, it's a small um, class C. Okay. What did we figure ours is going to be? A, a dollar every two miles. Ooh. Don't is, count it up. I know. <laughs> the first time we drove this, we, we bought this little motorhome and we went to Alaska. That was a shakedown run. And oh, the first wow. time we stopped to get 
the first time we stopped to get gas, I went in to pay. And unfortunately, we left the 31 gallon tank, 33, go, 33, 33 gallon, go almost empty. And when <laughs> I went in, now this was 2012, and I went in to pay, he goes, it will be $120. <laughs> what? I mean, at that time it was a lot. So we never, we never drove uh, less than on half a tank. We only left to go down that far. So uh, financially, it was a little better. You got a little better gas mileage, and you were sure you had gasoline. Yeah. Right. Yeah, with a stroke of luck on that, it was a good tailwind. We can get uh, probably 13. Wow. What's gas going for now in Maine? I think around 480. I, I don't know. I think it's bumping up to five. It's it's like 480, 490 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? it's the same yeah. as here. And diesel here is 589, but we've seen a couple places where it's six. Yeah, yeah I just saw the diesel here is 599. Yeah. And uh, we filled up with, uh, I guess it's 485, which isn't bad considering Pennsylvania has the highest uh, state gas tax. Mm. Well, we were talking just last night with some friends thinking, we're, we're not going to see the prices go down. I think they've been this for so long. That, and it's all greed that's driving it. So crazy. Our heating fuel budget for this year has increased 92%. Mm. Wow. The old adage with gas prices that they, they, they rise like a rocket and uh, come down like a feather. <laughs> mm. But the people in Europe are having fun with us because they've been paying this much for gas <laughs> for so long. And I yes. think the French have said the equivalent for what they pay is like seven seven dollars a, a gallon. gallon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, there's definitely a higher prices elsewhere. That's for sure. Well, we're going to get going. You all have a great week. Hey, we'll see you next Sunday. Hey, hey, Rodney, thanks for the update on the uh, disasters. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.